Hello everyone, and welcome back to a Formable Nations video, and this is indeed one that has been a long time coming, the East African Federation. The East African Federation is a formable that I think I've been wanting in the game since way back in like 2019. I've made videos about it, um, suggestions about it, I think I've even made a mod uh, just so I could demonstrate it, and now, after all these years, it's in the base vanilla game. But you might be wondering, how does one go about forming the East African Federation? Well, we find ourselves in a most spurious position, because unfortunately, Britain is unable to release any of the main contenders for forming the nation, Uganda, Kenya and Tanzania. I personally think this could be something Paradox could look into changing, as I don't really think it has too much utility to stop the UK from releasing these nations anymore. Um, it's kind of like anti-fun in context to forming the nation, and makes the overall challenge unnecessarily complicated. But alas, here are some ways we could go about forming it. Option 1. Well, we could always cheat. <laughs> um, cheating is an option by going into the game settings and releasing Africa, and then tag switching over to the nation of uh, Kenya, or whichever one we want to play. But since it's not Iron Man compatible, we're not doing that. Option 2. We could go into our game, onto the load up, we could disable the DLC for Man the Guns. This cancels out the British ability to not release nations, and then release Kenya that way, then reload the game back up in um, the current form with the DLC on. This is Iron Man compatible, but it's kind of so convoluted I just can't be bothered. Option 3. The Ethiopia strategy. In short, we play the Ethiopia focus tree, which has a variety of different ways to be able to access um, the states of East Africa, Kenya, and whatnot, uh, uprisings, conquests. I think there is even a focus to form a version of East Africa, so maybe that could be its own thing, but I want an old school formable nation. Option 4. Well, Rwanda and Burundi, two very small African colonies owned by Belgium, are allowed to be released and do qualify for being able to form East African Federation. The reason I'm not going to do it as them is they are so small and it is so painful to do, that is a form of self-torture I am not willing to participate in. And so finally that leaves us with option 5, the video you're watching today. We're going to do it as Napoleonic France. Let's begin. So, one might be considering how France gets ourselves all the way over to East Africa, the wonderful region we want to form today. Well, I'm going to mostly skip through it because France is not really why we're here, so let's just have a quick overview. The aim of the game is to make our way down the Napoleonic focus tree so we can avenge Waterloo. This gives us annex goals on Belgium, Netherlands and the UK. Belgium and the UK being the principal nations that hold the core East African territory. It's kind of going to be two birds, one stone. There is a little bit more we have access to with Ethiopia, Italy, and I believe a little bit of Portugal, which we might delve into, but I really just want to make sure we get the core formable nation, and France is the place to do it. So, without further ado, let's begin. I'll try not to dawdle too much around playing as France, because that's not really the reason we're here. We're here to see East Africa. But because East Africa is such a nightmare to start up, I think we're going to have to see a little bit of French gameplay. I feel like it's a pretty new change that the French focus tree actually collapses now. Um, so that, oh, what a brilliant event to get. Oh, no, no, no. Yes, the people do have the right to feel safe, which allows us to get begin rearmament. Um, that kind of all worked out nicely. But yeah, the focus tree collapses now. And uh, this has opened up for us. Okay, things are going well, with a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. On the off chance we ever find ourselves in Madagascar, maybe we could use a few 8 rubber. We've revised the constitution done, we now have to wait a year, so basically I have to choose something else to do. But luckily, because we were able to get the um, early mobilisation, we can start right up with begin rearmament. Gonna head down some defensive focus? The army XP is just too good. So I picked up Laser's Fur, if that is how that is truly pronounced, in the hopes that when I start researching more industry tech, that will carry over to when I release myself as a puppet. I'm not 100% sure, but hopefully that works. 
Wait, we can do the Madagascar thing again? I didn't realize this decision was repeatable. All right, fair enough. We continue to expand. Now with our constitutional reforms over, it's time to repeal the law of exile and really making sure we can get these nations under our control. Goodness, that's a lot of political power. So I think we can move up to partial mope, which is always going to be helpful, as well as proclaim the third empire. Things are on track. A very minor but kind of important thing I'm quickly going to do before the end is get tip of the spear just so I can assign these additional units to my D-Day invasion, or reverse D-Day, of Britain. Napoleon. Minus the hat. With that, I think we find ourselves facing the Great Great War. Revenge for Waterloo. The problem is those Prussian reinforcements. Hopefully they won't be coming today. And so it begins. No. Now it ends. We begin with Belgium. And I think we should also go after the Netherlands. Britain we don't have to worry about because they're already in a faction. Okay, some good pushes in general. Belgium makes one. The Netherlands makes two. And finally we're left with Britain. Let's see what we can do. Okay, the invasion is green to go. 20 units are flying across. Oh goodness, they really want Dover defended. All right, that's a good landing. Okay, let's see if we can immediately get our main offensive army onto the shores. That's going to really help. Going well, going well. I think they're too busy trying to clear up um, my colonies in Africa. With that being said, let's get some more units over here. Pushing in as best we can. Really just trying to react faster than them. Okay, we did get Liverpool, which is a pretty big deal in the grand scheme of things. It's all falling down. Wow, that worked out pretty well. Wait, I conquer Ethiopia by virtue of, because of the integration with them being a government in exile. Oh, no, 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 no. I actually forgot about this, uh, the way this interacted, but let's, uh, let's say this definitely works to our advantage. Of course, I'm sure that Italy may still have some contentions about that continued existence, but we'll see what it looks like in the post-conference scene. Okay, now that is one peace conference. Oh my goodness, it just straight up took it from Italy. Well, well, that is just outrageous, isn't it? You know, this new peace conference system is pretty good. So it's at this point, I do have the option to switch over and start playing as our East African formable nation, but I think I'm going to spend just a little bit more time, maybe in the Iberian region, wrapping up some potential additional African claims before I put this to bed. BRB. I'll also use this time to start building up Kenya, which is the nation I intend to play as. Unsure how many of these upgrades will actually come in useful, but we'll see. Another one bites the dust. And a very quick rush into Portugal. So, with France securing Africa, I think we can safely say that the time to do a Kenya forming East Africa goal can be achieved. Let's begin. And finally, Kenya. Hello everyone, and welcome to an actual Formable Nations video. 
Today we're going to be playing as Kenya and hopefully forming East Africa. So we're doing pretty well already because we control quite a lot of the territory we need to, but we need to get Uganda and Tanzania before we can truly get going. So that should be just a couple of easy wars. In order to do so, we're going to go down Fash because it gives us some nice manpower bonuses. Pretty straightforward here. For some reason, we've started out with a ton of French divisions. I have no idea why, but I'm sure there's nothing, no history behind it or anything. So, because world tension is spiked at 100 for some reason, we can do justifications immediately, because unlike um, Uganda and Tan oh well, Tanzania does, but unlike Uganda, we don't start off as democratic, we're non-aligned. So we're good to go whenever. I just want to make sure we get that started, get ourselves one military factory, and I think we should be good to go. Alright, with political effort done, let's get the guy. My goodness, this has been quite literally years in the making. Oh, and World War II started. It's kind of early, considering I just started my game. Honestly, I'm really surprised we were able to get the uh, entirety of Africa, pardoning the little bit of Italy, to be completely independent for this. I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, maybe there's a world where I could have also gone after Italy first, and then we could have truly tried to go for an African uh, United playthrough, but uh, that's a few too many war goals for my liking, so... I'm pretty happy with where we're at. <gasps> a legendary military factory. What a time to be alive. With that, I think I'll start justifying on Uganda. Now it is worth noting that the AI cheats. I think they cheat now more than I've ever seen them cheat before. Despite the fact he has no sieves, no mills, nothing, he is going to spawn a unit, maybe even two, from thin air. So this is something you're gonna have to be careful of. Screw it, while we're here, we might as well get going on Tanzania too. Ain't no time like the present. We don't have all night. I'm just wondering if I could do something kind of... I want to use the word meta and do anti fash raids to kind of prolong the existence of us raising fash. There's no reason for us to become fash because we can already do all the war justifications we like. If anything, it's going to hinder us. I'm going to try it. There's also a special national spirit you can get while you're uh, raising, so it's also worth doing it for that. Okay, the justification on Uganda is good to go, but I don't actually have a division trained up yet, so I'm going to have to wait just a little bit longer. As World War II begins in Europe, we'll have our own war here. Oh, this guy got a brilliant strategist. That's pretty good. I'm waiting for any stupid divisions that spawn out of thin air. Not yet, not yet, but it could still happen. Okay, we were lucky this time because nothing happened. One down, one to go. Okay, with that war good to go, I think I'm going to quickly get in on Sudan, because Sudan could be a nightmare to get later if I don't get them early. After that, I think I'll also go after Rwanda. They have two mills and a sieve, so it's very likely they're going to spawn a division. Oh good lord, I think... I think Germany won their war. And now they have a border with America. Uh-oh. And that makes that. And so, with those three corn nations united, I do believe we can now hit Form East Africa. And there it is, in all its beauty. So you get a cool colour, you get the wonderful name of East Africa, you get this really interesting looking flag, with all the main cores that come with it. The formation of the East African Federation. This is of course a really cool nation because it was historically plausible and is arguably still plausible to this day. Finally, we are united with all the wonderful cores it comes with. But wait, there's more because we still have some decisions to get even more territory and I fully intend on going for more. I'm genuinely surprised how easy that was to complete after all that. I thought there'd be far more resistance. Oh look, if it, oh, if it isn't resistance in Juba, I knew something would eventually pop up. How on earth is that unit got like support artillery and entrenchment supply and is just so thick when it basically consists of nothing? I, I refuse to believe it. Okay, let's see what we can do. No guarantee of success on this one, I'm afraid. Maybe if we get a very early encirclement, this should be a bit of a steamroll. Oh, did we just literally overrun him? Oh my goodness, I think we overran him. Okay, then uh, start the order up, I guess. We overran him. 
That's ridiculous. <laughs> Easy peasy. How have we not triggered the National Spirit event where you get some extra manpower? That's literally the, the reason why we, we got this. Well, that's pretty easy. Looks like there's trouble in Bujumbubura. Goodness, Bujumbura. With Rwanda and Burundi now under our control, we can now take the decision to call them. Oh, we finally got it. That little extra boost of recruitable population. An extra research slot? Well, this could go a very long way. Um, I guess just additional buffs for combat? <laughs> There's so much tech we have to catch up on, it's actually ridiculous. But I'm hoping the AI has to catch up on it too, unlike Russia, which seems to be falling a little bit behind. Since I don't actually need to go fast anymore, if I delete this guy, do I still keep the assault divisions? Huh, it still seems to be there. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's see how good Malawi is. Oh wait, I should probably stop training my divisions. Okay. Now let's see how strong Malawi is. That's a pretty green looking bubble to me. Okay, two units in Mozambique and they're my next target. So uh, Africa is getting stronger. Every one we take, they're a little bit stronger than the last. Easy peasy. Oh goodness, we need to charge all the way down to the south. That's going to be annoying. I just want it on the record that the next people we're going to be fighting are one of the segmented states of Ethiopia. And um, they're using their special DLC units which to me feels like cheating. Okay, let's see if we can get Sidemo. Okay, I think it's about time we see if we can break into the Horn of Africa. Okay, luckily we are cutting through them like butter, which is a great relief. And Addis Ababa has fallen. So after the encirclement of Gambella, we now have the ability to take our next decision to control Sidemo and core it. That's an extra million manpower. Oh, well, population. <laughs> I think I'm going to start up a spy agency just to help with the control. I'm just going in here and giving people um, supply consumption medals because <laughs> there's so little supply that if I don't give it, I feel like I'm screwing myself over. I can't believe this, but we're actually going to have to get started on building some, <laughs> some submarines, which is not something I thought we were going to end up doing. Okay, good luck to Mozambique. I'm just wondering if we can sneak some kind of encirclement through here. Typically I wait until after war, but because this could be actually relevant, we can now take the next decision, which allows us to call these two states around the Great Lake Mall of uh, Moali, Malawi. So hopefully now supply should be better. We actually own these factories and things should be a lot easier. Better quickly uh, hook up this port to my main supply line too. I'm a bit worried we're not going to complete this war in time for the next justifications. It's uh, a bit of a slog. Why is there a tank? Why on God's earth is there a tank? Okay, I'm getting a little concerned about supply, so we might have to start pulling some units out, which is fine. If we keep spamming force attack, surely we're going to win, right? Surely. I do believe just spamming it is a strategy and ever bigger we grow. Okay, on to the next wars. Thanks to that war, we can actually link up the railways that were uh, separating us from being able to get into core Ethiopia. We might actually have supply in this region. Oh God, I, oh no. Uh, they just took down Russia, didn't they? In short, this seems to be an Axis victory. Unless the US wants to, I don't know, do something. Okay, only a few more wars and I think I'm done. Oh, up here in Sudan, I think the first, Port Sudan no less, submarine has been built. Okay, I think that's Gambella and with that our ultimate war will be ready to go. And that's going to be for Madagascar. Uh, yeah, that's a weird one. There is still the issue of Italy to deal with, but I'm very contentious about how that would actually go. Why on earth must I do this ridiculous naval invasion? The world wonders. I think World War II is coming to an end because uh, the United States has landed in Tokyo. Okay, in what may be the final war, this is one I truly cannot speak to the success rate. Naval invasions can really screw you over. Okay, well, some good early landings going on here. Okay, the capital is undefended maybe? Oh wait, no. The capital is there, okay. 
Let's see what we can do. He's really struggling. Oh my goodness, did he just attrition himself to death? Because that would be funny if he did that for no reason. Uh, did we just win? Because the AI just <laughs> lost it for no reason? Let's not celebrate yet. The island is still very defended over here. Wait, we did it! Wow. I mean, that is entirely their fault, <laughs> okay? I do not think I uh, overperformed. I think they just screwed up. So, with that, we can take Conquer the Comoros, which are these islands here. Wow, a Sivna dockyard. What a time to be alive. With that, though, I think I'm going to end here, because that is a pretty East African-looking East Africa. That's basically all the decisions you can take, apart from the single one to do with taking down Italy's territory, which I could do, but might severely screw me over. So I'm going to take the W where I can and say thank you very much for watching. Um, there's East Africa, finally done. If you liked, feel free to like, feel free to subscribe, and um, I guess I'll see you all next time. Wait, that's it? All these years and he still didn't do Bowl of Us Empire yet? Is this some kind of sick joke? Bye.